Good morning to everybody. Uh, my name is Felice Petraglia and I work at the University Università degli Studi of Florence. And I will give you the lecture on endometriosis and uterine disorders, the medical management. First of all, I have no conflict of interest. And secondly, I'll start from this general uh, slide in which uh, the debate for all the endometriosis and uterine disorders is, do I do surgery or medical treatment for my patients? This is common for uh, endometriosis, adenomyosis and uterine fibroids. I will talk you, with you those three disorders. And in all cases, I will mention that uh, the decision will depend on the age of the patients on the symptoms and on the search of fertility. Let's start from the leiomyoma. Leiomyoma is one of the causes of abnormal uterine bleeding. You know, it's a very common disorder. And uh, the question we have all the time is, uh, what is the, 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 the medical or surgical treatment again? And you see here the age, the wish to preserve the uterus, the wish to preserve fertility. This is a meeting correlated to IVF we have to save the uterus. So we have to decide between to remove the myoma or to do a medical treatment. And you know, the medical treatment are very invasive, maybe hysterectomy, but uh, for fertility preservation, you have to do myomectomy. But you have also medical treatments, the GnRH analogs, progestins, oral contraceptive, levonorgestrel, IUD, SPRM, and new treatments also, artery, uterine artery embolization, MRI guided laser ablation, and high food. So the, 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 now the choice, the choice for, the, uh, for doctors, for gynecology is much better. You know, these are the newest one, uterine artery embolization. These are the new treatments, and they represent a, no, a valid and non-invasive alternative to surgery. You see here, the MRI laser, the high food, and they're poorly recommended in, one who, in women who want to preserve their fertility because unfortunately some of those technologies do not allow a, a good pregnancy and the risk of a, a possible complication of pregnancy. So the one, of, uh, the one other option is to stop this bleeding and to reduce the volume of the fibroids is to use drugs. I mentioned to you, this is a nice guideline 2018 Ulipristal is one of the, uh, the drugs. This is the, one of the publications by Jacques Donnet in which uh, he published uh, the, the PEARL for trial. Uh, until uh, one year ago, this was really a good treatment. We had uh, we, 900,000 women were treated uh, uh, with this drug, uh, also for uh, multiple uh, two, 12 weeks, then stop other 12 weeks even four different uh, courses of treatment. You see here one course and four courses, you have a very big uh, reduction volume, uh, even 80% uh, or say 28% of reduction of the volume. So this was a very good treatment. The publication with successful pregnancy from uh, Pellicer in Spain or from Jacques Donnet in Belgium, a, a pregnancy tre women uh, treated with ulipristal acetate have a conception and favorable pregnancy outcomes. So However, in 2020, uh, EMA the, stopped the, the treatment uh, for uh, ulipristal acetate. So uh, probably we will have some more drugs in the future, but because of liver disorders, so there were six uh, patients who had to have received a liver transplantation for this drug. Uh, now the the procedure to use the drug are much more complicated and less diffuse. So we, uh, the, the policy to you have to have a selective progesterone receptor modulators will start with the new possible uh, drugs in the future. Jacques Donnet proposed uh, uh, this uh, cartoon, this flowchart, uh, in which you have uh, also hysteroscopy for some myomas, hormonal treatment when you have a, a small myoma type two, three, four, five, and if you have a, an optimal response, you may try to conceive. If you have a satisfying uh, uh, response, you may try to conceive, or you have, a, uh, if there is an endometrial cavity, you have a surgery with myomectomy. So if you want to have a baby, the medical treatment are really useful because you reduce bleeding and volume, and then you can try to conceive. Otherwise, you go to the myomectomy. This is a, 
uh, depending on the age you have and on the type of fibroids uh, you have. And uh, if you have a seven, a type seven and type six or seven, you don't need any treatment. You can have your pregnancy without any problem. Uh, for adenomyosis, it's uh, more complicated or more simple, depends, because this is uh, adenomyosis and endometrial glands located in the myometrium. You see here, this is the normal uterus. This is a diffuse adenomyosis. This is a focal adenomyosis. This is a nodular one. Depending on which one you have, you may have heavy bleeding, infertility, and uh, dysmenorrhea. And these are the mechanisms implicated in altered uterine receptivity, infertility, abortion. So you uh, may treat your patient very well with IVF formulation technologies, but the, the uh, abortion is really very often in these patients. And uh, there are no specific indications for adenomyosis management, surgical or medical. Canada, World, ASHRAE, American College, Royal College, you see even Society of Uterine and Endometriosis Uterine Disorder, we are trying to develop a, a, a real good management. What we have again is IFU, uterine artery embolization, hysterectomy, uh, fertility sparing procedure, or uh, for women who have no fertility, you can have also uh, surgical removal of the uterus, it's very common. If you want to have a medical therapy, this is a paper we published in Fertility Therapy two years ago, you may have the same drugs we used for the, uh, for the fibroids. You have GnRH analogs, you have uh, uh, progestins, which are marked common for endometriosis, levonogestel IUD, uh, contra oral contraceptive and nosterol anti-inflammatory drugs. These are drugs which may use, but they are off-label. You see here one of the drug which is becoming more popular because of the double blind randomized studies is Dianogest, is a progestin. This is a, a Otuka, a Osuga, a Yutaka Osuga from Tokyo. He has several publications now. It's very good, it's very useful. Pain score is, works very well. Dianogest, two milligram per day, is very effective and well tolerated. And you see here, uh, this study recently published that you may have potential benefit on embryo implantation. So if you have a suspect of adenomyosis because of uh, your MRI or uh, ultrasound, you may treat your patient with a dianogest and the, the, the implantation will improve. You see here, this is uh, the mechanism of agonist of analogs, uh, anti-proliferative effect on myometrium, apoptosis in adenomyosis is increased, uh, local hypoestrogenic effect, you may improve uh, fertility. This is a paper, the same paper on fertility and sterility. And this is a combination, you may have a Chinese study, combination of GnRH analogs and IFU uh, for decreasing volume and adenomyotic lesions. Uh, this is a, a, a very recent uh, uh, review. This is a systematic review meta-analysis. Levonogestel IUD, works very well for adenomyosis, reduction of pain, reduction of IUB, reduction of uterine volume. So you may obtain your uh, aim to reduce uh, pain, to reduce bleeding, but also to improve uh, fertility. These are 10 studies you see here. This is a very recent publication, 2019, on the um, ACTA Obstetrica Gynecologica Scandinavia. So you may, if you have infertility or desire of pregnancy, you may start with the medical treatment if it, or with ART or with, with a medical treatment. Then if it's not successful, you move to the surgery. What about endometriosis? The last 10 minutes I will devote my presentation to endometriosis. In 2021, we have, a, again, this is a disorder of infertility and pain. The same story. We have much more improved the diagnostic symptomatology imaging. We are working very well now on the diagnosis, much improved. But we have also to realize, because we, are infer we treat infertile patients, the comorbidity. And this is a big issue for a treatment of endometriosis. Then you can go to ART, to laparoscopic surgery, to medical treatment. And again, the same story for these uterine disorders. The choose is between laparoscopy and medical, or if you want to have a baby, you can start immediately one with the, your ART. 
uh, what is important in this uh, moment, in the last 10 years from the Canadian, they started in 2010, empirical medical treatment may be done without laparoscopic confirmation. So this is very important. We don't need to do uh, laparoscopic diagnostic uh, evaluation. We can give uh, according also to West, Ashre, West, uh, and also Seud, we are proposing uh, empirical medical treatment. And the use fees you hear, we have several drugs from 1975, Danazol, MPA in 78, GNRH analogs uh, 25 years ago. Now we have Dianogest 2010, and um, many oral GNRH antagonists are coming on the market. So much better. Uh, the last decade and the next decade, we will have even more. And you see here, this is a very nice publication by Bob Casper on fertility and sterility a couple of years ago, in which he says that uh, biological data and limited clinical evidence support a potential adverse effect of uh, um, oral contraceptive on the progression. So he proposed on this publication that uh, progestin only pill or progestin are much better for the treatment. And the dianogest is really, in the last 10 years, is really two milligram per day, is working very well. Um, treatment may have some vaginal bleeding at between, but it works uh, absolutely very well. Works on the endometrioma, you see here, uh, before and after surgery, because you have no recurrence of endometrioma. If you have a recurrent, you may have a, after 20 months, uh, you have a resolution of the, uh, with dianogest of your recurrent endometrioma. So works very well on the cyst, work very well on the deep in the filtrating endometriosis. You reduce the dyspareunia, dysmenorrhea and pelvic pain is very effective. And you can treat also for five years. This is a very common question. If I am very young a patient, uh, do I may be treated for a long period of treatment before to do any pregnancy or, uh, surgery, yes, you can do. It's very good drug. If you want a baby, you have to do cystectomy prior ART. No, ASHRAE guidelines says that no perform cystectomy because you reduce ovarian function after surgery. So it's much better to treat with some drugs before ART, and then you do your T treatment uh, or before. Uh, deep infiltrating endometriosis, again, the effectiveness of excision to the deep before ART is not well established. So it's growing and growing the evidence that you don't need to do surgery before uh, IVF or ICSI, whatever. Uh, you need uh, to do a good medical treatment. You reduce pain, you reduce uh, all many symptoms, and then you can start with your technologies. One possible is to give uh, analogs. This is well established by ASHRAE medical therapies as an adjunct treatment. You can prescribe the agonist period of three, six months prior assisted reproductive technology. This is a, a paper which was uh, um, published Garcia Velasco in Spain, but the other publication confirmed and also ASHRAE suggests that you can use. Now is uh, becoming popular GNRH antagonist. In, in fact, you can use uh, uh, without uh, stimulation of, uh, you can have no flare up, so it's good. Uh, it's suppression of LHFSH, different level of hypoestrogen, without, sometimes without uh, flashes. And in the market now we have, uh, in the United States, only United States, you have uh, Elagolix, neuro oral non-peptide GnRH antagonist. This is very comfortable. No, there is no injection, it's oral. And you can give uh, once a day, 150 milligram or 200 milligram twice a day. And there are some publication on New England Medical Journal by Luke Taylor and a big group of colleagues who published that is very good on pain. And uh, new studies are coming. This is a fertility study in 2020. Again, Yutaka Osuga from Tokyo uh, published uh, this uh, relugolics, an oral uh, GnRH uh, oral antagonist, which reduces endometriosis pain. Uh, this is a randomized double study placebo control study. So it was a phase two study. And you see here, you have a reduction with the relugolix, uh, which is different from elagolix. Remember, there are three now coming. The third one is linzagolix and was published again on 
by Jacques Donnet on 2020 in Fertility Study, which again, phase two study, double blind placebo control, Edelweiss study, but the name is Linzagolix. So Elagolix is already on the market. Relugolix will, is starting to come in 2021. Linzagolix probably 2022nd, but we have at least three different uh, antagonists uh, with, uh, and we can use for the treatment of endometriosis in our patients before ART or before surgery or before whatever is a very good option for us gynecologists. And you see, this is my last slide in order to summarize to you the, the indication for medical treatment in endometriosis. Remember, in the young women, in reproductive age, without, with pain and not the cyro pregnancy, give a drug. Empirical treatment may be used. It's very, uh, absolutely very uh, comfortable. Uh, you can have a, a, a good uh, uh, treatment, a good option and the, the drug works very well on pain for long term. Then if you, uh, uh, the second option uh, is uh, you can give uh, when surgery is contraindicated or refused for previous medical surgery, because sometimes patients come with a recurrency, they don't want surgery, give a medical treatment. The third option is uh, prevent recurrency after surgery. There are publication now uh, showing that you may have a, two or three surgeries, recurrency, five recurrences after surgery in endometriosis because the disease is still there. Before, to, in order to prevent a recurrency, please use a medical treatment. So much more than in the past, much more possibilities, uh, progestins and GnRH antagonists, uh, and many drugs are, will come even more in the future. So endometriosis is absolutely a, a field, and uterine disorders and adenomyosis, are three fields in which we will have many more drugs. This is the, the, the situation now. Hormonal drug, FDA approved the Leoprolide, Nafaraline, Negoceraline, Elagolics, uh, but not the Dianogest, unfortunately. What in Europe, the EMA is uh, proving the, the, the analogs and the, the progestin. So uh, in Europe, uh, we have uh, these new drugs. Uh, in the United States, they have Elagolics, but probably now in Europe, we will have also uh, Renugolics and other drugs. So it's uh, a, a big uh, issue, very important field of uh, investigation and application and satisfaction. Patients are really satisfied. We have 10 years experience on these uh, drugs and really is very, working very well also on fertility and fertility uh, success rate. Uh, finally, I remember you that endometriosis is a chronic disease, you see here, medical treatment in adolescent, fertility age, you may have ART uh, before surgery, medical treatment uh, in the, uh, when you have already your baby to prevent recurrences. My last slide is just to thank all the team of radiologists, anesthesiologists, uh, and young gynecologists who are collaborating with me for the uh, success of this field. And we are really generating a big, uh, Center for Endometriosis and Uterine Disorders in Florence. And it's really an open area where we welcome to everybody to study endometriosis and adenomyosis and uterine disorders. Thank you for the attention.